I'm Tom van Hulten. I'm working at Growth Balance Advising Company. My responsibility is to make sure that the crops are growing well and keep healthy. The main goal of this experience is to get the highest yield with the less of water. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Baar. In this project, the function I have is giving advice on the use of sustainable soil technology, uh, particularly with plant beneficial uh, fungi that act as biofertilizers. The substrate you see here is mixed with the mycorrhiza. The mycorrhizal fungi is a fungus that brings over the nutrients and the water to the roots, so it's connected, and then the roots take up the nutrients and the water, bring it up to the shoots, to the green parts of the plants. And uh, in exchange, the plants provide sugars from the photosynthesis to the fungus. The main goal of this experiment is to investigate whether we can grow crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, etc. Uh, with as less possible water use as possible. It's very interesting to use low quantity of water because one of the big issues worldwide is the limitation of water. The tomato plants are grown up this size in four weeks. So the plants that are untreated with the mycorrhizal fungi are smaller and they also have a different color. As you can see, they're a little bit on the darkest side and this indicates uh, that they have a shortness of nutrients. That's not so strange because the substrate was treated with half the amount of, uh, of fertilizer and they don't have the helpers, the mycorrhizal fungi, to provide them with the nutrients. And here, the mycorrhizal fungi obtain all the nutrients that are available in the substrate, although it's still the half amount of fertilizer. But they can take it up with their hyphae, uh, but here, there is only the roots that can take up the nutrients. That is less efficient than the mycorrhizal fungi do. By planting out already vigorous and strong plants with a good root system, the chances that they uh, survive uh, with a low water gift are much higher. We expect that we can grow the crops with 90% less water, but the crops could also die because there's too little water. What also could happen is that the microorganisms are not as functional as we expect and that also the crops don't develop so well or get sick or don't uh, produce the amount of yield we, uh, we are aiming for. We use this kind of tray. It's very high, 18 centimeters, to make sure that the primary roots are going down and we want to plant them safely in the soil without damaging them. That's why the plant can go down to the water. That's why we can grow the plants with less of water. It's very important that the capillaire stays intact, otherwise the plant cannot take its water. The water can come up out of the ground, up with the capillaire to the plant. When you dig the soil with a machine, the soil is loose and the capillaire uh, from the soil is gone. That's why we use a pin to make the hole for the plant that the capillaire stays intact. It's very important. We put in extra mycorrhiza and afterwards we put over the water box. To connect the plants with the soil, we give them one liter of water, not in the box, but into the hole where the plants are standing. To take care of the plants that they get water, we are making two ropes and they come out on the underside. And the ropes are the equipment to give the water to the soil and the plants. So we fill up the box with water and the ropes take care that the box is not going empty in 15 minutes but that it takes three or four weeks. The plant always gets some drops of water. When we leave the box open, yeah, animals can drink out of it. Evaporation is very big. That's why we cover it with a plastic plate like this. Then a lot of evaporation is already gone. But to save the water what's falling on the box, we have a real cover. We put the cover on the box like this and we close it. 
Now the water can fall on the box and it's going through these blue holes inside the box and it cannot come out. It's going out, of course, through the ropes to the plant. The biggest challenge for us is to use 90% less water and get the highest yield possible. But the biggest challenge is for the plant himself because the plant needs the water for the process in the plant to, make, to take the minerals to grow and to cool himself. So when it's getting very hot, the plant uses the water to cool himself with evaporation. That's for the plant the biggest challenge if he can grow with this less of water. These tomato plants are, are now seven weeks old. It was not treated with mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria, but it received the usual, usual fertilization treatment. As you can see, the plant grows well, and uh, we think it's an okay plant. But if we compare it to treatments with mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria, we will see tremendous difference. These tomato plants have also been seeded at March 12. Uh, these tomato plants have not received any fertilizers, but they have received mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria. And these plants received uh, at least 50%, 60% less water than usual. So the my mycorrhizae and the bacteria help the plant not only to take up nutrients, but they help also the plant to take up um, water. These plants look healthy, vital, and they already form uh, buds. This means that they are going to flower soon and to set the first fruits. And that is rather rapid after seven weeks already. Now we are doing this big trial with the water boxes. Of course, it's always very interesting to make a competition with a normal system and the water box system. That's why we planted here the plants directly into the soil and giving them water like a normal grower should do. And then we are looking what will be best. These uh, pepper plants have been seeded a month ago. What we can see here is the non-treated mycorrhizal plants. And these plants are treated with mycorrhizal fungi. You can see there is a clear difference between the non-treated plants and the treated plants. And this uh, difference is very pronounced. This is why we use a rhizotron. Here you can see the root development, which is really poor for the small non-mycorrhizal plant. While the plant that is treated with the mycorrhizal fungi has a very well developed mycorrhizal root system. We make the choice not to heat the greenhouse so that we can grow like we did uh, 50 years ago. That's why the plants in the morning when the sun is coming are not picking up the climate because they are not warmed up and the temperature is going too fast, too high. That's why the plants are getting a little bit um, weak. The plants are going to hang. They are, cannot stand the, the evaporation of the, of the greenhouse. That's why they are not growing so fast. When we heat the greenhouse in the morning, the plant can better take up the climate of the day. And we have no CO2, so there is nothing. No CO2, almost no water, and no heating in the morning. That's why these plants don't give the optimum production of a hydroponic system. We are only doing this on basic elements. I'm uh, Peter Hoff from Holland. I'm the inventor of the Croasis water box. The water box functions in a way which is actually quite simple. It has a cover that's collecting water in two ways, through condensation or through rain. The water is getting into the bucket and the bucket has a model of a donut. In the middle of that donut, we plant the tree or in this case, the vegetables. Now, because of the fact that the bucket is on top of the soil and the water is in it, the temperature below the box remains very cool. So even if we have the sun which is shining on the soil or when we have very high uh, air temperatures, still the temperature below the water box is not higher than 25 degrees Celsius. This means that your roots never have stress. They always have a cool temperature and that makes them growing very fast 
and very deep. And that's actually the trick. If the trees grow very deep, the plant will have sufficient water to survive during the hot hours of the day. The reason that I've started with this trial is that while traveling all over the world, I see the problems that people have if they want to grow vegetables or if they want to grow food. They have little capital, they have many times not even energy for pumps, there's a water problem, uh, they cannot even pay the fertilizers. So if we can develop uh, a method to grow vegetables with very little water, without using energy and without using fertilizers, then we actually can help poor farmers to still produce sufficient food for the people in the cities. There are about 300 million poor farmers in the world that have a problem to grow in the modern, modern way with uh, hydroponics. If you want to grow with drip irrigation, you need to dig a well, and a well costs you $5,000. You need electricity for the pump, which is also very expensive. So uh, you cannot grow vegetables on a small scale if you want to do that with drip irrigation. With this method, any family can buy five or ten boxes and then produce food even for their own use. What I actually hope is that when I've proved that this principle of growing is working well, that governments or NGOs will develop instruments, micro-credit instruments, for poor farmers so, so that they are able to buy the Grace water box and produce their food with it in a very efficient and cheap way. When you see these tomatoes hanging here, the first question you have is how many kilos a square meter are you going to get of this new system? When we are counting, we, we count uh, an amount of uh, 300 tomatoes a square meter, more or less. The tomato's weight is uh, more or less 35 grams. So that means that we have between 10 and 12 kilos of this cocktail tomatoes. So that means the production in a hydroponic system is between 45 and 50 kilos maximum. When I count 12 kilos, that's um, yeah, more than 25% of the yield we make when you compare it with the hydroponic system, with all the equipment they have. A good climate, a heating system, CO2, uh, fertilizer, water enough, uh, early starting, very early starting. So we are doing very well with this system. We are going to look to the major difference between uh, our trial with the water box in Elsout and with a complete new nursery in a hydroponic system. When you have a hydroponic system, the plant is growing on rock wool. Rock wool that can contain water. The plants get very precisely water with the dripping system. A pen with an infus, every infus gives the same amount of water. Every dripper can give two liters an hour. When you compare the hydroponic system with the system with the water box in Elsout, you have some huge uh, differences. Because um, when you heat the greenhouse, you can much earlier start with growing the tomatoes. The tomatoes here are put in the greenhouse at the beginning of December and they harvest till November, till the beginning of November. And they get up to 60 kilos a square meter with the hydroponic system. With CO2, with fertilizers, with a heating system, with everything on it. A huge greenhouse, very high, very light. And in Elsout with the water box, we have an old greenhouse from the older days, from 30 years ago. We have no fertilizer, we have um, much less water, we have uh, no, uh, no CO2, we have no heating system, so we are producing on a way they did 30, 40 years ago. And we get an amount of tomatoes between 10, between 8 and 12 kilos a square meter. That's what we get in uh, Elsart. But the season is much shorter because we start in April and we end in September. 
when you compare the amount of water with the water box and out of the water box in the hydroponic system, you can say that uh, in Elsout with uh, no water box, out of the box, just in the soil, we are using 320 liters of water per square meter. In the box we are using 40 liters uh, per square meter and here we are using 700 liters a square meter of water. That's what you can compare with each other. Yes, okay, in the hydroponic system the production is much more higher, but you, when you compare in the box and out of the box, 320 liters and 40 liters, yeah, it's a big amount. We picked off all the fruits so this is the, the end of the season of the, the water box. We're here at the company Groeibalans and today we're going to see the conclusions and we're going to make the recommendations. When you visit our website groesis.com you can find all the information about these trials. But here we give you the main conclusions. The best group to do tests with is the tomatoes and the results of those tomatoes groups are very interesting. We have had a test without mycorrhizae, three tests with mycorrhizae and one test with drip irrigation. Of course when you use the water you have the highest crop. So we have put the crop of drip irrigation on 100%. The other groups we have given 85% less water. So with the water box, we have only used 15% of the normal water use. Now here's the interesting thing about the crop. The crop without mycorrhizae with the water box has given 58% compared to the drip irrigation. Then we have put three types of mycorrhizae. One mycorrhizae has given 67% of crop compared to the drip irrigation. One mycorrhizae has given 82% and one mycorrhizae has given 84%. Which means that it is very clear that you can use mycorrhizae to replace fertilizers and have good results with them. The water box is a very good solution when you don't have enough water or the water is too expensive or too dirty to use dripping systems. And when you compare the water box with the dripping systems, we have uh, less production uh, of... Um, we can get up to 80% more or less with a combination of mycorrhiza and a good system and a good treatment of the plant. Then you can, then you can get that production with 85% less water. So when you don't uh, have enough water in the area and it's very dry, you can use the water box to grow vegetables with a good production. In the experiments of last year, we have tried to use less water and we have tried to replace fertilizers through mycorrhizae. We can conclude the following. You can use less water, up to 85%, and you can still have a crop at up to 80%. The other thing that we've concluded is that, yes, you can replace fertilizers through mycorrhizae, but not every mycorrhizae is a good mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae is another word for fungus. And you know that, for instance, botrytis is a bad fungus. Which means that when you use mycorrhizae, you first have to do trials in order to find whether the mycorrhizae that you want to apply is a good one for your crop. Now, what we found is that there's a difference of over 25% in production between one mycorrhizae and another. So Groasis will do more investigations, more experiments, and in the coming years, we will offer you mycorrhizae that will give those good results and that can help you to have good crops as a replacement for fertilizers. Thank you very much and please follow our experiments and videos in the coming years.